So you've probably spent a lot of time now tweaking the shaders, applying textures to the various elements of the uh, character and the scene, um, adjusting the lighting, just spending the time and taking the time just to get everything just as you, uh, you want it. Um, you've done lots of test renders and we've been using the preview final gather setting just to give us a general idea of uh, how it's going to look when we produce our final render. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at setting this scene up to render and then we will skip across to Photoshop uh, and just look at uh, compositing all the different layers that you're going to output together and just to see what sort of effect you can get. So this is the scene. Um, the first thing we're going to do is first just check the shadows on our lights. And as, uh, as I said previously, we've been using ray trace shadows and we set the light angle to 5 to soften the edges. We're going to set the shadow rays. We'll set those to about 30 and that will just get rid of that graininess for us. Let's just close that down. Now let's open up our render settings and just see... Uh, how we're looking there. So in your common you just need to set a name. Um, we're not rendering an animation so we don't need to worry about anything else here. And close these down. We're going to highlight the depth and the alpha channel. Make sure your camera is set. Obviously set your size. You can go into the custom settings here and go down to A4 if you are, just want to go straight to A4. I'm rendering slightly bigger than A4 here. Just go down. Default light is off. Although if you've got lights in the scene, by default, the default light is disabled. Uh, we'll skip passes for now. Features, we're just going to go straight to quality. Ramp this back up to production. We're going to change the pixel filtering to Mitchell, which will just... Uh, give the anti-aliasing uh, a much cleaner and sharp image, uh, sharp edges. Uh, we're going to turn on jitter and turn off sample lock. Now under ray tracing, because we're rendering quite a large image, you'll see I've changed this to large BSP. That just speeds things up um, if you're rendering an image that's quite, quite big. Um, I think that's all I'm going to change in there for now. Indirect lighting, we've already set that up in the background. You'll notice these aren't disabled, and that's because when we change the quality in features, it'll have turned those off. So I'll just enable Final Gather again. And then we can go back in here and just have a look at this and see if we want to change anything here. Um, we can change up, change the accuracy, but obviously, as it says here, which is expensive. Um, and we can change the point interpolation. Now, before we had some of the um, that sort of mottled effect. Now we can increase this, which may uh, smooth out the the final gather. So that's entirely up to you. What you should probably do is some smaller test renders at this point, uh, and just see how this is looking before you go for your full res uh, render. Um, and that's all we're going to do in there. So let's have a look at render passes. If we if we render this now, we're going to end up with one image, one flat image, which we can take into Photoshop. We can probably play around with contrast, brightness, hue, saturation, that sort of thing. Um, we can probably try and select some of the body parts using uh, the select wand um, and try and edit them that way. Uh, but we, what we're going to do is we're just going to make our lives a lot he easier and uh, building some render passes so that when Maya renders this not only will it render a flat image but it will also peel off all the different layers like reflection, um, ambient occlusion, scatter, all that sort of thing they'll all be in different layers so you can overlay them as you want in Photoshop and play around with them to your heart's content. So to create render passes at the moment in here we have none so we're just going to go create new render pass and you have a list here you can see all these different things we can select so just going down we want ambient occlusion because that's going to give us the uh, lighting 
beauty without reflections and refractions and that's just going to give us a the main render but with the reflections and reflection refractions peeled off um, so we can add those on top later and we can adjust the amount of refre ref reflections sorry um, we're just going to do we're not going to do a beauty because you get a master beauty by default camera depth will give you the depth information which you could possibly use later um, if this scene had a lot of things in the background you could use the camera depth to uh, well create sort of a depth of field effect so objects in the background will be blurred and objects in the foreground would be sharper let's move down now obviously the more of these that you select the longer it's going to take so only select the ones you think you're going to need we want diffuse material color that may give us that'll just give us the flat colors so when we created our rim lighting you had your normal color you had your base color and the rim light color and all this will do is render those flat you won't get any lighting information or anything so that might be handy to have um, incandescence if you've got any objects which are glowing um, or their incandescence channel in the material is set that will render that out separately so I'm just skimming down here um, obviously because we've rent we're asking it to render without the reflect refra reflection and refraction sorry I just can't say those words today we're going to add those in as separate layers as well our scatter as well in case we added a little bit of uh, fake subsurface scattering onto the uh, um, shaders and obviously we need a shadow and we could also add a specular in there too so you get the idea with that create and close and that will put them all into here but at the moment this won't render those out we need to associate them with this scene and with these uh, this render layer which is at the moment we're not doing anything with render layers um, if I just move this over here we click render here we have a master render layer you can create other render layers here and it will render those out separately as well and you can associate these with different render layers but we're not worried about that now so we'll have all those selected click this and now that will associate all this with that master render layer and you can also if I double click on that there if you need to you can go in and you can adjust uh, the settings of each of these render layers here just by changing these you know you can play around with all these if you're not getting exactly the uh, the render layer that you want but again for now we're just going to leave that as it is so this is all set up one thing I must add is if you want the depth channel outputting you will need to change this to an IFF um, that's because the IFF file format is the only one that will store that Z information uh, into the uh, the outputted file. So we'll change that to IFF for now. Um, we've got our render passes. We've enabled final gather there. Quality we've set up. Indirect lighting is fine. So there we go. We're pretty much ready to render. So. To render this, we're not just going to go up here and click render because that won't give us all those render layers. That will just give us a flat image. Instead, I'm going to go to render, batch render. I'm going to open up the options. Now, this might look slightly different to how yours is set up. I can't reset that. Normally, auto render threads is on. And this is normally set to warning messages. Now, a little tip um, I found when um, doing a batch render is if you have auto render threads on it normally only uses two threads as you can see normal number of threads rendering simultaneously now if you've got a, a dual core processor or a triple core processor or a machine with more than one processor um, a lot of those processors won't be being used so turn off auto, red th auto render threads um, and then have a look at how many processors your computer is using um, I will just pause this while I just check mine 
It's okay. I was just worried that when I press Control Alt Delete on Windows and open the Task Task Manager, something else might have happened. Um, I'll just bring this over so we can have a look. So here we can see how much CPU usage I'm using, how much memory I'm using. Um, when you do a normal batch render with auto render threads on, what you may notice is the CPU usage might just be a few percent, ten percent maybe at the most. Um, and here we can see I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve um, CPUs basically. You can change this CPU one graph all CPU so that's one graph for all one graph per CPU so because I've got 12 CPUs you tend to say two threads per CPU so I could set that to 24 which will rocket that up to a hundred percent and you'll ensure that your batch render is using all the processing power and um, will render quicker if it's only using two threads in this example it would only be using one CPU here and all these wouldn't be used. So that's just a little tip there. So in this instance, I'm not going to set it to 24 because if I want to do something else while it's rendering, then that will just lock up the machine. So you could set that to 20 or however much uh, you're willing to use. So say you've set all that up, you just click, or you, well actually, while we're here, auto tiling, you could drop that down to 32 and that gives you a bit more of a pre precise render as well. Obviously it takes a little bit longer so it's up to you, it's a bit of a balancing act. But when you've done all that, click batch render and then down here it will start and you'll see uh, updates in steps of 5 um, on, on um, the render's progress. Um, and if you look where your project is set, uh, in my instance it's eTutorials 3D World, um, in there there will be an images folder and in there it will spit out all the different render layers and these will all be, uh, you'll have all your images inside. So that's uh, basically getting set up to render. You've hit batch render and you're ready to go. So. However long this takes, it could take an hour, could take a few hours, could take a couple of days depending on the complexity of your scene.